hazard in the central and eastern U.S. As shown by today's earthquake, an area of low seismic hazard does not mean there is no seismic hazard, and our model suggests there's a slight chance of damaging earthquake shaking. The earthquake focal mechanism is consistent with contraction, squeezing on a fault at a depth of approximately three miles. This is a region with many older faults that may be reactivated at any time. At this time, the fault that causes earthquake isn't yet known. There's a history of similar sized earthquakes in the region in the last few hundred years. There have been at least three magnitude five earthquakes in the New Jersey region since the 1700s and several magnitude four earthquakes in the last few decades. Larger earthquakes have occurred on the East Coast in the past, including the 2011 magnitude 5.8 mineral earthquake and the 1755 approximately magnitude six Cape Man, Massachusetts earthquake. Thank you, Jessica. Uh, we know that earthquakes can be upsetting for some people. And the best way to cope with these feelings of being unsettled by earthquakes is to understand how best to protect yourself during shaking, how to prepare for earthquakes, as well as to understand how and why earthquakes happen. Advice on how to protect yourself includes, if you feel shaking and you're indoors, drop cover and hold on. And uh, we do know that more earthquakes than usual called aftershocks will occur near the area of the main shock. The main shock is the largest earthquake in the sequence. And where there are more earthquakes, the chance of a larger earthquake is greater, which means that the chance of damage is greater. No one can predict the exact time, location, or place of any earthquake, including aftershocks. Our aftershock forecasts give us an understanding of the chances of having more earthquakes within a given time period in an affected area. Now, we've released an aftershock forecast for today's earthquakes, and we typically release these types of forecasts for magnitude five or greater in the United States and our associated territories. But we also release these aftershock forecasts for widely felt earthquakes, where there's a lot of interest about what could happen next. And we encourage people to uh, follow our website for updates. But currently, as where our aftershock forecast stands, it tells us that the probability in terms of what could happen next um, is that there's a 3% chance for one or more aftershocks larger than a magnitude five in the coming week. And a larger than magnitude five can be damaging. There can be uh, smaller aftershocks within the next week, up to 27 magnitude threes or higher aftershocks. Um, and magnitude threes or higher aftershocks are large enough to be felt nearby. We have recorded at least two aftershocks related to this earthquake in the last few hours. As I mentioned, this earthquake was widely felt, and we know this because we have received more than 160,000 felt reports on our website. Uh, this may be a new record. We're currently validating this information. We encourage people to fill out the Did You Feel It reports on our website, as this information tells us a lot about earthquake shaking felt by different people in different locations. What you fill in an earthquake is highly variable based on where you're located and what you're doing. For example, people in taller buildings, they may feel shaking more strongly or more intensely than people in single story buildings. This citizen science project is critical uh, as far as building our, our knowledge around earthquakes and how people experience earthquakes as well as how they behave during earthquakes. And you can fill out Did You Feel It reports on our website. Thank you. Great, thank you very much, Sarah. And thank you, Jessica. Um, at this time, uh, we're going to go ahead and begin our question and answer portion. If you do have a question, uh, you please submit it to the chat um, or raise your hand and we will go ahead and call on you from there. All right. It looks like um, we have a question from Rachel Sawicki. Can you please um, unmute your line and then state your name and organization again for us? Yeah. Hi. Can everybody hear me? Yes. Okay, cool. Uh, my name is Rachel Sawicki. I'm a reporter with uh, Delaware Public Media in Dover. Um, can you tell us more about the, you said there were two aftershocks reported in the last couple hours so far. Do you have any details on like what magnitude those were and kind of where those were mostly felt? We're just getting you that information. Just give us a moment. Okay, thanks. We'll go ahead and post those aftershocks in the chat as well. Yeah. Um, yes. 
yeah, so let's go ahead and do that. Okay, um, the next question, and then uh, thanks, and then uh, I appreciate you uh, removing your hand once you're done with your question, so thank you. Uh, next question from, Ed, I believe it's Eduardo Orbia, and please state your name and organization. Yes, uh, thank you. Can you hear me? We can. Yes, my name is Eduardo Orbea. I'm a national editor with Telemundo uh, Station Group here in Miami, and we cover New York City. Uh, my question is, uh, given the fact that New York is not near a fault, uh, as I understand, how is it possible that uh, it was uh, uh, there was a quake? Is it coming from a fault far away? Do you know any idea about this? Do you have any any idea about this? Yeah, so these types of earthquakes are infrequent, but not unexpected. They can happen anywhere at any time. Although there are no known active faults mapped in that area, there are dozens of older inactive faults that formed millions of years ago. And under the current stresses from tectonic plates moving, those faults can be intermittently reactivated. And so our current understanding is that this, that may have occurred during this earthquake. Um, but we need to um, do some more work. Our scientists are working on it to discover the causative fault and understand more of the tectonic processes behind this event. So, so it may have happened through an, a very old uh, inactive fault. That can be, they can be reactivated, yes. Thank you. Okay, we have a question from the chat from um, Zach Wichter uh, and asking about aftershock forecasts and wanting to confirm again what you said, Sarah, that there's a 3% chance. Is there a 3% chance of a magnitude 5 or greater aftershock in the next week? That's a great question. Uh, yes, there is a 3% chance of a magnitude 5 or greater in the next week related to this earthquake. Okay, great. And I have uh, one other hand up here from Michelle and uh, Michelle Bocanagra. If you can say your name correctly for us and your organization, please. Hello, this is Michelle Bocanagra from WNYC in New York. We're the NPR, one of the NPR affiliates here. Um, so I just had a quick question about the, the you, you mentioned um, that there were three magnitude five earthquakes in the New York region. I believe you said it was since the the 1700s. Could you just give us a better understanding of when those three earthquakes happened, if, if you have that on hand? Um, so I don't have the exact dates on hand, but two occurred in the 1700s and one occurred in the 1800s. You can find that information by searching the USGS earthquake catalog. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. And Michelle, we'd be happy to follow up with you on that and help walk you through how we find that. Okay, yeah, sounds good. That'd be great. Trying to capture your name here to make sure we do that. <laughs> All right. Okay, we have another hand up from Evan Bush. Please state your affiliation. Your Hi, thanks for doing this. This is Evan Bush with NBC News. Um, I was just hoping you could go into a little bit more detail about how the aftershock forecast works, what information uh, contributes to that, who does that work, and um, and how those probabilities are calculated. Thank you. Thank you. That's a great question. Our aftershock forecast is calculated. Uh, we've we've been working on aftershock forecasting uh, uh, one more, um, for press. decades now. Um, sorry, there's awesome. some background noise. Someone has their mic open. If you can please turn that off. Thank you. We've been collecting, uh, we've been developing this aftershock forecast for decades now. And what we use is we use thousands of earthquakes of similar size to be able to calculate how this earthquake may behave in the coming days, months, and years based on what we know from the past. So we use information from the past and we've created a mathematical equation of what we think could happen next. That's how we developed our aftershock forecast. And the people who do this are statistical seismologists. We have about seven here at the United States Geological Survey, and they are the ones who update our aftershock forecast. Uh, if, if I can follow up a little bit on that, is that based in any way on the specific geography of uh, this earthquake? 
Um, for example, like, yeah, I'll just leave it there. Currently, we're using a generic model. Uh, so this is our pretty standardized model for earthquakes of these size of this size. Thank you. We have a couple of new questions in the chat, and I'm, we may need a more specific um, question here, but I'll, I'll go ahead and read it. It says, how are we defining the region when we say that there have been a certain number of magnitude five or four earthquakes in the region? Does that mean earthquakes have originated in New York or New Jersey? Um, I mean, one second. Um, we should look into that and we can provide more information at a later time. Great, thank you. And that user who put that information yeah. in is, um, there's no name associated with that. So if you want to pop in your it looks like you may have just done that. Pop in your um, name and information so that we can get back to you on that. Uh, Mike, uh, Mike uh, Sackle from Catskill News asks uh, or says that he's located in Sullivan County, New York, in the Hudson Valley, and the earthquake was, of course, felt there. How strong is an earthquake felt at such a distance, being 100, um, I assume, miles northwest of New York City? So earthquakes in the eastern U.S. are often more widely felt compared to earthquakes of a similar magnitude in the west. Um, seismic waves propagate much more efficiently in the eastern U.S. because of the um, rock properties. Um, so many people feel them over a much larger distance than the similar magnitude in the western U.S. Okay, great. I see. Uh, so Michelle's hand's still up. Let's see if I miss any other questions in the chat. Okay, it looks like that's it. Does anyone else have any more um, questions for our speakers today? Please raise your hand or throw it in the chat. Looks like we got something. Any info yet on the magnitude, time, and location of the two reported aftershocks thus far? Um, so we will get we'll get back to you on that one too. We can send you, and that's Rachel uh, Sawicki. Um, we will follow up with you on that. Rachel, if you put your email in the in the chat, that'd be really helpful for us to get back to you quickly. Um, thank you to Mike Blantpede, one of our USGS um, folks at headquarters. Um, there, there, there are, you know, we have our, uh, our event page for this earthquake that is available to you all it has a ton of great information. We'll repost that again for you here in the um, in the chat that you can use. And we will then put the names of the of the presenters back into the chat as well. So thanks for that question. Um, let's see, we have one more hand raised unless it's yeah, Evan Bush, you have another question. Yeah, I understand this is in the general area of the Ramapo fault zone or fault system. I understand that we don't know the specific um, fault where this occurred. Um, but could you help me understand or characterize what that zone is like and also just explain a little bit about uh, what's known and unknown in that region with regard to faults? Thank you. Sure, yeah. Um, so the Ramapo Fault is one of several known mapped faults in that area. These faults are all much older, millions, hundreds of millions of years old. Our current knowledge is that they're not active. Um, although they may have small earthquakes on them from time to time. Um, as we mentioned earlier, some of the older faults can be reactivated at any time. Um, you mentioned we don't know the cause of the fault yet. That's true. We know there are a number of faults in that region that could potentially be reactivated. We just don't yet know which one. And our scientists are um, working on that to try to determine that in the coming days. And how will they do that work? Thank you. Um, we can look at aftershocks to try to see if there's any alignment of seismicity. Sometimes we look at satellite imagery as well. Okay, we have another question here. Um, they were wondering if you could go into a little bit more detail about the rarity of earthquakes uh, with, an with an epicenter here or in New Jersey, and especially earthquakes of that magnitude. Yeah. Um, Pull this up quickly. Yeah, so as I mentioned, there's been 
three magnitude five earthquakes in the New Jersey region. So that's very close to where the epicenter was that have happened over the last several hundred years. So these are fairly infrequent. There have been smaller magnitude earthquakes like magnitude four that have happened several times in the New Jersey area over the last several decades. Okay, great. Um, I've seen um, there's also some more questions about just our event page and how you uh, search it. Um, Sarah Minson, one of our uh, scientists out here on the West Coast, has put in a search for how you can look for magnitude five quakes in the in uh, in a certain time period. We have this great YouTube video that was produced a couple of years ago that actually shows you how to use our USGS earthquake event page, and you can mine all sorts of great data for your reporting using this. So we'll go ahead and throw that into the chat as well here before we before we finish up. Steve, is that something you can help with? Yeah, I can work on that. All right, are there any other questions from um, our folks out there? Sarah, is there anything else that you'd like to share with folks? No, I think I'm, I'm good. Uh, you know, like I said, we do absolutely acknowledge that earthquakes can be upsetting, upset, unsettling, especially if you don't have a lot of experience with them before. And the best thing that you can do to relieve any unsettling feelings you might have is to learn how to protect yourself during shaking and how to prepare for earthquakes in future. Great, thank you. Okay, I'm gonna go and find that, see if I can find that earthquake event page because I think it's such a valuable tool for reporting. Here it is. Great. Well, thank you um, for everyone's uh, attendance today. And we're available at earthquakemedia at usgs.gov if you have any other further questions. Um, in the chat, there is a link to the uh, YouTube video that will show you more about how to use our event page um, and super, uh, super useful. It's a quick, quick video and it has uh, different chapters. You can kind of jump right to the information you want to know about. Okay, thank you very much. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you, Jessica. Thank you, Sarah. You did great. Thank you. Can I leave?